opportunity. So I want to see them try and make the best out of this and uh, just force fights, try to play patient when they're behind, waiting for an opportunity and engage into those and just learn a bit from these instances. Because nobody really expects them to take Dignitas down, but if from this series they can now learn enough that when they go into their next match, yeah. they can translate that into just playing a bit better, they will be able to push other opponents to the brink and uh, maybe take them down and get their first match win, not only map win. So as long as they can do that, I'm happy from their perspective, but Dignitas is of course another opportunity here also to prove themselves. But they have to be careful that they don't get too confident because leftovers, we've seen them in the Open Division in 2017, we've seen them in other games, they definitely can turn a game round. They're not a bad team by any means, but as they said, they still need experience in the professional plane here, so let's talk. Yeah, for Dignitas, their main goal is to come in today and not allow for a Fnatic versus the playing Ducks to happen again in HEC as they want to make sure that they take down the number eight team in the standings. Now, let's go ahead and look at Twitter as you guys continue to hop on Twitter. Tweet us with the hashtag HGC at Heroes Esports from Love Call. Somehow, I believe that Leftovers HGC can win today versus Dignitas. I know that this would be probably the biggest upset in HGC history, but for some reason, I can just see it happening. Well, so far it doesn't really look too, look too good for them, but I would not be opposed to that at all. That would be a lot of fun. That would be quite the mix-up. Can't wait for another exciting Blizz Heroes HGC play weekend. Hope everyone will have fun watching. Keldor, are you proud of me? I, uh said wait there instead of W8. Yeah. Can you also pronounce his name? Oh, I've missed it. What was the name? Uh, you, you couldn't. Yeah. Oh, almost got him to Uber. say it. Luber? <laughs> Is that what you said? Uber. <laughs> oh, Uber. Yeah, so uh, I... Nailed it. As I said, this weekend is crazy. We have so many good games that have a massive impact on the standings where direct competitors go up against each other. And this weekend, after the weekend is done, we will have a very, very clear idea who the favorites are to go to the first Western Clash this year. Battleground number two. Let's check it out as we get ready for our second map. It's going to be Towers of Doom. Leftovers with the choice. First pick going over to Dig. Yep, Towers taken. And this is actually the first time that they have chosen Towers. They've uh, never chosen Towers as their map before. They have only played one game on the map, and obviously, since they haven't won a map yet, they lost that. But it wasn't really one of their choices in the past. They prioritized Battlefield of Eternity. We had them with picks on uh, Dragonshire, which we just saw. And we had them also with a pick on a, an Infernal. So they're really starting to rotate through the maps a bit. Personally, I'm still a bit curious if maybe Cursed is going to make it in since they used to ban out Cursed and they went away from that. So maybe they have started to play the map more, practice it, and maybe develop a strategy where they said, okay, this looks good to us. No. But they're also a team that at this point is willing to sometimes throw out interesting combos. We've seen them with Nova, for example, which nearly led to a victory. And arguably, they should have won the Nova game. Yeah. So depending on the map, depending on the situation, they would be the team to try and pull something funky to surprise an opponent. If you missed that game, it was Leftovers versus Trick Esport, the final game in the series. Nova taking on Blaze, and that was quite the series. We did see a lot of weird coordination coming out towards the end there. I felt yeah. like Leftovers started to fall apart a little bit, but still, a great composition that we felt like should have earned a victory. So maybe we'll see that here on Towers of Doom. If not, I'm okay with them running the same composition they had last game. Maybe a different warrior slotted in there to be a little bit more aggressive on Sapper play. But for the most part, Leftovers should be set up for this map. Let's see if they can bring the fight to Dignitas. Leftovers has a pretty high priority on Johanna. They played most of the, they played more Johanna games than anybody else in HTC Europe to this point. Johanna has now 10 games played and she only won two of them. So that's a 20% win ratio. She's really suffering. We see her most of the time on Tumul Spider Queen, but we also see her on Dragonshire as we did in the last game. So maybe change it up here a bit. Dignitas now heading straight into our second one. We are currently, of course, looking on Towers of Doom. Normally, Abathai is one of the heroes that they really like to ban early on here. Genji, of course, is another one to consider. And they jump on banning out Genji, first of all. Genji, a bit strong on this battleground. I would be shocked to not see Abathai banned because that's what Leftovers did twice now when they played here. So on Towers of Doom, it is definitely one of their main banned heroes. They banned Hanzo in the past as well, but right now when you go up against Dignitas, I personally think I would be a little bit more scared about Abathur. They leave they it alone. Hanzo. Hanzo's been taken away. 
Shimada Brothers, no play zone on Towers of Doom. Will we get the first Abathur, or will it stay with an Uther or a support that we normally see from Dick? Yeah, I'm curious about that. Yeah, because I'm wondering. Abathur is banned all the time, and for really good reason. We Every time we see him, he has a massive impact on the game, yeah. does really well, but are they going to choose him now? They go for Tracer first of all. Now, Abathur can be paired with Tracer quite easily. And Tracer's actually a hero that Dignitas themselves in the past have banned on this battleground on their second ban slot. And keep in mind what I said earlier. They are the team that is the most successful with Tracer by far. They played her three times, have three wins right now, and overall Tracer is sitting at only 40% win ratio. So most of the wins that she has are thanks to Dignitas, and now they are playing her for the fourth time. I mean, it helps when you have three of the best Tracer players on your team. You have Zalia, <laughs> who's playing support now, but currently being played by Poik and Snitch when it comes to that Tracer. So they're able to overlap in hero pool, and they're absolutely devastating on those two characters. So leftovers have to think about it. How do we want to handle the Tracer? Do we see a variant come back in? Is there any other warrior that really stands out that could really help out leftovers for stopping this onslaught of damage that comes out from Tracer? We could definitely see variant. There's so many questions right now. First of all, Dig is going to try to pair Tracer with Malfurion, mm. very likely at least. So do you pick him away? And they don't. They go for an early Rhaegar again. And this is one of the points that I really don't like about Leftovers and the way they draft. Their Rhaegar priority is extremely high, more so than any other team. And Rhaegar is not a bad pick, but it makes them first of all a bit predictable. And they end up in situations like this one, where in their first rotation they pick Rhaegar, even though the meta itself leans more towards Uther early picks, towards Malfurion or even Lucio. There's nothing wrong with picking Rhaegar, mm. but picking Rhaegar this early in the rotation seems to be a bit weird, especially when you know that your opponent is most likely going to look to pick up Malfurion here. But Dignitas could play Tracer with Uther as well, but we have seen the Malfurion combo more so than anything else. It's also the support that Dignitas played the most six times so far. So this is going to be game number seven. And I would have expected the leftovers to maybe go into an Abatha early on, maybe at least pick Malfury in a way, yeah. and not go into Rega here. So definitely a bit of a weak spot, I think, in that drafting pattern. It's a really hard struggle, isn't it? Trying to play what you think is good, and then also trying to adapt to your opponent. And leftovers right now, I feel like they should be adapting more often because they are zero and nine. So reactions, they, ha they have nothing to lose if they try to go for a reaction or try to stop their opponents uh, and try to adjust and, of course, learn from it, which is something they mentioned they want to do. But this Dahaka Rhaegar kind of has me worried. I want to see what's going to happen towards the later stages of the draft. If they grab someone like the Varian, which we haven't seen in forever, it becomes a little bit better because Rhaegar's here for that wave yeah. clear. But again, we want to see some adjustments from Leftovers. I don't even have a problem with him playing Rhaegar. Link plays a fantastic Rhaegar. It's sure. absolutely fine. I have a problem with him being this high in the draft. Since, what are the chances? First of all, if you are playing in HCC, your support needs to be able to play more impactful supports than only one. <laughs> and I believe that Linked is capable of doing that. But the chances that Dignitas is actually banning out Rhaegar or picking him away are very slim. Yeah. And even if they would do that, you still have so Uther or Malfurion around who are, from a play perspective, offering you a lot of opportunities where you could, for example, use Malfurion with an ETC, power slide into roots. You could uh, pair it with something else. But Dignitas said, hey, we play Tracer. So they're not going to play Rhaegar with this. But there might actually be banning out Rhaegar. But that's the only way where this could happen. And then you still have other supports available. So if they would have picked Rhaegar a bit later in the draft, I would have liked that a lot more. So that didn't happen. Right now, they have to deal with the situation since the Haka is taken. Dignitas doesn't look on the Haka, but they are still trying to shut down. Ab sorry, Dignitas is not looking at Abatha, but they're still trying to shut it down since Abatha could be a big game changer with Greymane here in particular. But yeah, leftovers falling back into some patterns when they're drafting. Rhaegar and Greymane involved in most of their drafts. Well, speaking of patterns, Greymane coming in. Greymane is pretty typical against the Tracer composition with that go for the throat trying to grab and engage and then kill her right away. Much easier to pull off, especially towards the later stages of the game. The issue is whether or not you're going to fall behind and do you have a tank that can help you lock down that target. They grab Murden here. Now, Murden gives you some ploys for aggressive plays and also you can handle that front damage from a Tracer if she drops down the Pulse Bomb. But again, I maybe would like to see a little bit more variety. Regardless, they do have the Wave Clear, so the draft isn't too bad. Yeah, Murden is also another hero that they play a lot. They have played him four times up to this point and this is going to be the fifth time. But yeah, they have a couple of core heroes that they play nearly exclusively, yeah. whereas others they don't really look at too much. 
So that's one of the things that I personally find a bit interesting. They are, for example, one of the two remaining teams in HTC Europe that hasn't played an Uberag yet. Not saying that they should have picked him here over Muradin, but it's just another hero that is actually really strong, that is being played a lot right now, that they so far haven't even uh, looked at. Zealots didn't play him either, but everybody else so to say does, and uh, Nuburak is arguably one of the best tanks that exists currently, even in the global meta. When you look at North America, you look at Korea, and Nuburak is doing fantastic. Final pickup coming in from Leftovers. It's going to be the Brightwing, which is something that we have not seen too often lately. In fact, not existent in EU, right? We haven't seen a single Brightwing yet in our actual uh, game. Not that I know. Yeah, no. so first Brightwing here in HCC, and it's going to be by the Leftovers. Now, there is some positives to the Brightwing pickup. First off, you're in a double support composition. She can afford to go off like Dahaka and globally soak up, but also that Polymorph, instrumental against a dive coming your way. And I also like the Brightwing pickup because Lenara got picked up on the left side, which means you need a little bit more healing to come in. Rhaegar, over time, is going to run out of mana and lose out on the sustained battle. So Brightwing helps out with that. You don't like it, though. Uh-uh. He hates Brightwing, though. I think Brightwing right now is not really strong enough. Mm. Uh, you are right when you are talking about Lenara, but I feel Rega can do a pretty decent job with that already. And my concern is that they don't that they lack the damage output. They really rely on stacking CC and uh, taking, I feel, Tracer apart. Yeah. That's what they really need to do. So let's say Brightwing gets a Polymorph in and Dehaka can capitalize on that with a quick drag as Tracer is uh, CC'd already. And they kill Tracer, I can see the happen. Or if they do the same to Lunara. But the positioning that we see from Dignitas is usually strong enough to play around that. So if they don't get that kill, I don't think they can do anything in these team fights later on. They can, on the other hand, and that's the one of the big advantages of their composition, they can try and use the global mobility. Yeah. If they are able to pull that off, they could force Dignitas in some uncomfortable situations, but I feel from a pure damage perspective, Rain Main alone is not going to do the trick here for them. So they will to have heavily to rely on the CC to get these kills. But we're going to find out right now as we're heading into game number two. All right, let's find out. On the left side in the blue, a Dignitas. Snitch playing the Lenara, Poik on Tracer, Zillion on Malfurion, JPL playing Arthas, and Wubby on Blaze. Will they be able to stop the Brightwing composition? To the right side of the map, we have the leftovers. Brightwing played by Blake Kidney. We have the Haka played by Podivos. DAB on Greymain. Lel Auba on Muradin. And we see Linked playing Rega. So straight into it. Gonna watch the Tracer. She'll be the one that you want to keep an eye on in the early stages. Later on, though, as we go past the mid game, hit level 13, watch for the Linara to start putting out the damage, especially paired here with an Arthas and a Blaze. The slows will be in abundance here. Yeah, and that could, uh, of course, lead us to some dirty damage on level 13 with the unfair advantage. Dirty, dirty damage. Yeah, it's, it's, neighbor damage. In, it's pretty crazy. If you have an Arthas at the front line and then you have Roots and also the Slows on Blaze, you can capitalize on unfair advantage to the end of days. Only question is, is Dignitas afraid enough of Greymain and the potential go for the throat here that they say, hey, we need greater spell shield just to dodge some so nobody can blow her up. But, yeah, this game could definitely get out of hand quite quickly if the leftovers cannot capitalize on their global since this is the best advantage they have. But Lauba is already in trouble. He's dead. He should be, yeah. Arthas locking him down. Oh well, my gosh, the support might, might be enough. Ah, oh, not quite. Not quite. Letting keep trying to save him. But Tracer and Arthas is just a little bit too relentless. I don't know why, but my brain's doing that weird thing again, thinking you mentioned dirty damage, but what would we consider clean damage in Heroes of the Storm? Well, dirty damage is just dirty because it's just so much. Sure, you but get the mo you get basically a hundred percent uptick from your talent that also from the talent that requires on slow. That's why it's a dirty combo because it just has so much synergy that it's perfect here. Rega, by the way, is getting blown up by a tracer. Clean damage would probably be very little damage. I think clean damage would be cursed bullet. It's all in one swipe. It's just clean, precise. Okay, I can get behind that. Yeah, you that. get behind that? That's, right. that's not too bad. I mean, personally, I would prefer if we finally would get the uh, Janitor Leoric skin into the game. That would be clean damage. I mean, he literally would clean up the field. But so far, Blizzard hasn't listened to all Blizzard, our please, calls. we need Janitor Leoric. We ask you about once every three months, and we need the opportunity to say clean damage in yeah. our casting. So please deliver. If you have never heard about the Janitor Leoric skin, I am pretty sure that if you type that phrase, that into Google, you get a couple of pictures. <laughs> it is glorious. Go ahead and check that out. I wouldn't mind a, a cleaning support, too. That she comes in, gives you a bar of soap, and you get you healed up. That'd be nice, too. 
really working. I don't know who in the Warcraft. Especially now that we have someone like Blaze that just spills oil everywhere. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. We are giving you money, Blizzard. Let's do it. Yeah, it's All also right. great against the Gawa Creep, by the way. Yeah. Dignitas is uh, putting the herd on as they typically do, taking a pretty massive lead. They've grabbed sappers. They're pushing in their opponents. They've opened up the bottom side, which means sappers are even more dangerous. And this is all before the three altar phase. Yeah, I mean, Dignitas is currently crapping all over leftovers. This is four kills against zeros. Zappers taken. That early game has not turned out the way that leftovers wanted. And they have not gained any advantage out of their global yet. And that is a massive problem here right now. Because Dignitas is running the show. Tracer in the back line is distracting them completely. Lunara has all the all the space in the world that she needs. And Poik is going one versus two here. He just doesn't care. He he honestly just doesn't care. Portibus doesn't even get the kill because Ruby is ready. And that was around a bush too where Dahaka excels. He kept walking in to get the movement speed to chase a tracer, but she's too mobile. Tim, he just got a one versus two kill. <laughs> <laughs> he just went in and said, like, I don't care. Just die. And then moved out before the Haka could get the kill. It is insane. And they are... This is... Oh, my God. This are they going to get all three altar phases and the bottom four? Are Deacon Toss shutting down leftover that hard? Party Boss gets harassed. Yes, he will not be able to get the channel. The bottom four is down to half health with Arthas and Lunara keeping up with it. Deacon Toss don't even care about this altar. They don't have to get it. They just want to delay, delay, delay. I mean, we had a 40-0 at some point. I think that was at an international event. Oh, Wasn't that Europe versus, versus North, North, North America? America I think. Yeah, I think uh. I remember now. Um, but Europe too strong. Not yeah. allowed to happen. All right. So uh, at least not going to be a 40-0. But losing the bell tower at the bot lane, uh, that is that is it's insane. Two level lead, five kills against zero, taking the bottom bell tower. Leftovers is running a double global on this map, and they just haven't had any chance to have an actual impact with those heroes yet. And in team fights, it didn't work out for them either. As I said before, I really doubt that Greymane has the damage output that alone would allow them to turn these fights around as long as Dignitas coordinates well. And this is something that Dignitas has excelled at the entire year. Coordination, communication, and they are doing it again. This is just a full display that if you're playing against Dignitas, your room for error is very minimal. Yeah, it is. They are very good at capitalizing on mistakes, and this very clean play is which every other team highlights about them, that they basically play perfect at this point when they're playing in HTC, that they look fantastic, and leftovers, I really think that their draft just doesn't measure up to what Dignitas has, so it puts them even farther behind. More shots against the core. We're five minutes in, and leftovers is down to 29 points on the core. They have lost the bottom bell tower, and they are desperately trying to get back into this, but Dignitas is increasing the level lead against the double global and is homing in on level 10. Yep, the more is coming too. Sapper's coming in on the bottom. No one from Dignitas is hanging out there. Oh, there we go. Arthas floating around, making sure no one's coming to contest that fort, which allows for Dignitas and the rest of the crew to rotate up and work on the altars. Two spawning, one on the left, one on the right. And they are easily going to get both of them. They can also make a play for boss with a two-level lead. But if they did, they would have to give up the bottom bell tower, so they might want to try and hold on to that. JPL in a bit of a trap here as Link goes in. Here comes Celia as well. They're trying to get the kills. Silence being pushed out, and Greymane is in a lot of trouble. DAB trying to move away here. Barely escapes, is able to move back. And in the meantime, more shots are... More shots from the pumpkins are escorted into the core. Another tower is taken, another altar. The second one is being channeled now. And this is another five shots delivered. 17.16 for leftovers. And the best part about that game, too, is even though Dignitas didn't get a kill, they forced a global to come down just to save a target, which gave them those two altars. We have the sappers spawning pretty soon once again. Dignitas fully in the lead. And leftovers, their main goal and their only goal right now is to get a full level of experience. They have to get 10 if they're going to have any chance of coming back. Yeah, and it will be a very... They have to more or less take 10, force a team fight, and they basically have to wipe. And now it looks very unlikely since we have another kill for Dignitas, 6 to 0. They are still more than two levels ahead. They're two and a half levels ahead, and they're just simply controlling the bottom lane. They control the camps, and through the camps, they currently get shot after shot delivered against the core of leftovers. Dignitas doesn't let up the pressure. They could at any point go for boss. The reason why they don't do it is because the bottom lane pressure is more valuable to them. 
More sappers coming in. Ding Toss keeping up with it. Leftover is looking more lost by the minute. Ten about to hit, but this middle fort is under siege as well. They have no way to contest in the bottom. They have to just come defend. Yeah, and they simply give up those three points against the core. Now down to 13 because they're saying, we can't do anything here. We have to defend the middle. We can't get both. Now they're trying to make a play with 10 Haymaker being used to murder and even just trying to get some isolations going here. Malfurion with the ult and the kill right afterwards against Brightwing. Brightwing down, Linked is on the run. Lauber helps him out with a Storm Bolt so that Arthas can't use another Howling Blast to lock him into place. But it is this game so far has been a disaster for leftovers. They are just not getting anything done here. Zelia is ridiculous. He timed out that Twilight Dream to connect when the phase shift came in, so he can make sure to interrupt the Emerald Wind, which would may have possibly saved the Dahaka, stopping Brightwing and earning them a kill. Perfect timing by him. Will be canceling the channel on the altar at the bot lane, waiting for the bell tower to be taken in the middle, so that they get the extra point. That's six shots against the core. They're down to seven right now. And I couldn't agree more, more with you. Zelia is... He is ridiculous as a player. It is not even funny how good he is in that support role. It makes me mad, because I'll never <laughs> be that good. When I have to pick a support in Hero League, I'm not Zelia, so I'm not picking it. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous how powerful he is. Zelia is just, in my opinion, straight up the best support in the world at this point. Wow, that's a bold claim. But I, d I don't think so. I don't think I can contest you on it when thinking about it. I honestly don't think it's a really bold claim. I mean, even if you disagree with that statement, you would still have to place him in the top two, top three. The games that he's shown at GCWC, the games that he's shown here as well, I'm not only relying this on uh, um, the last three weeks that we've seen, but everything at the international tournament has also basically led me to believe that right now he is just not rivaled. He's getting better and better and better, and he just doesn't make, he basically doesn't make mistakes anymore. He talked about how you can't really compare the experience of being a healer, a support in World of Warcraft, how it doesn't obviously translate into Heroes of the Storm, but the mentality translates. A lot of the positioning and the idea of how you ha what you have to do, what your job is, and again, mentality, that, that translates over. And that shows because he has that experience and he brings it into Heroes of the Storm and adapts, of course, to the extra challenges that this game poses to the role, and he does it perfectly. Well, with that all being said, I do want to point out what Ding Toss is doing here. They, oh, Haymaker goes in on Wubby. He's thrown behind enemy lines. He gets out. He supermans his way out. Gets caught by Pony Bus, but still impressive. Yeah, but it, there's the kill, and that is a lot of experience, by the way, for the leftovers, considering the position they are in. But now a double altar is on the map. They have to go. And they have to get both of them. They can't give a single one of them up. And Tracer zipped to the bottom. There's no one Channel there. has started. There's nobody to interrupt. Nobody to interrupt Tracer, and that's game. Dignitas with a decisive game number two on Towers of Doom. 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Up to 2-0. to zero. Just like that. Dignitas is on another level. Granted, this is one of our mismatches of the weekend, but still, they are undefeated. Currently, what now? 11-0? Looking yep. for a 12-0 with game number three. Leftovers had a couple of moments where they got a kill, but other than that, map control heavily in the favor of Dignitas against double global. And I have to say it again, I think leftovers, they need to change the drafting. Yeah. They, they they walk away with compositions that in itself are not horrible. Yeah. Even though I completely disagreed with the Brightwing as a second support pick on the last one, but I can see the idea behind it. So it's not that I say, okay, this has no chance of winning whatsoever. But putting, for me, really the biggest crime is, and I talked about this during the draft, Putting Rega into the first pick rotation is a mistake right now in the current meta. Uther is incredibly powerful. He's paired a lot with Greymane. And Leftovers, they play Greymane all the time. If you already do that, then combining him with Uther really would help you. You know your opponent is aiming for the Tracer Malfurion composition that we've seen so much. So if you are okay with playing Malfurion, pick Malfurion away from them. Make sure that you do that. And even if you don't want to take any of these two supports, then still leave Rega for one of the later picks and take another high impact hero at the start that is strong in the meta now, just so that you have a better position for yourself. I also would love them to finally start playing Anubarak. They try to be aggressive. Greymane is the hero they pick the most. Anubarak together with Greymane, if you're trying to dive in. Tyrael, same thing. Try and play these aggressive comps if you already attempt to build a composition about Gre uh, around Greymane all the time. And if you're not comfortable with that, then 
be willing to give Greymane up in favor of another hero that you play, being it Genji, being it Hanzo. So they really need to adjust the way they draft slightly. We'll see if Leftovers will adjust their draft going into game number three, which will be next after this commercial break. Or if Dignitas will find the way to earn another victory.